Hey everybody, so today we're going to talk about the source editor. So if you want to have access to the source editor, you find a sound effects file, for example, let's take this, and you can double click in the contents editor right here, you can double click on the source that you want to edit, and then you will see the edit, uh, sorry, the source editor show up. So uh, in this case, we have this footstep, we, I'm going to reset it here. So, all right, so you can trim it, bring these little bottom right, bottom left squares, and it will trim the file size. You can also, in these top top right, sorry, yeah, top right and top left corners, you have these little triangles, you can bring them in. You're gonna fade in the file and fade out the file depending on how far. You can right click on those and set different curves. Uh, whoops, sorry, you can, on the curve, you right click, and then you can choose a different curve. And you can move them around, kind of like, kind of like a DAW. Um, you can move the play cursor, which will determine from way, where the file will play when you play it. Um, and then you'll see it move, like you see right now. So that's pretty much what you have in this view here. Actually, you know, well, you can zoom in and out. So if you want to have more definition, you can zoom in here. And if you want to have even more definition, but on the other axes, you can zoom in here. So zoom in and zoom out are here, and then you default back with these buttons here in the middle. All right, so zoom in, default, zoom in, default, zoom out, default. Anyways, you you, you get it. Uh, all right, so after that, uh, you have some general, uh, in, still in the general settings tab, you have this little square here that gives you information about the file. So the original file, the channel count of the original file, the sample rate of the original file, file size, duration, and format of the original file. And depending on what conversion settings you have on the parent and so on and so forth, it will show uh, different information for the converted file. Right now, this file isn't converted, so it's not showing anything. Actually, we can convert it and it will show you, see, right here. Um, all right, so next, um, we have these options here. So you have, you can change the channel config um, of the source. Now, I set up an example here. So you have an ambisonic file, for example, and you want to change the channel ordering because in a, when working with ambisonics, you might want to change it uh, from FUMA to AMBEX, AMBX, or vice versa, and so on and so forth. So it will detect the channel config. So if you have 5.1, 7.1, if you're importing multi-channel files or mono or whatever, it will detect how many channels there are there and will tell you what it has detected. And then from there, you can convert it to different various options. So you have quad here, you have 3.1. Uh, but in this case, let's say that, well, I know this is an ambisonic file because it's in detected FUMA channel ordering. And then in this case here, I'd like to set it to ambix. I just do it like this and it just reorders the channel, the channels. So simple as that. Uh, going back to our footstep here, um, Actually, no, no, we're going to go back to ambisonics. Uh, one cool thing about the source editor, and this is one feature I think a lot of people don't know about. So let's say, no, not trim, sorry. Um, let's say I want to loop the file. Well, the way to that it works is your WAV file can have loop points encoded into it. Um, and WISE will detect that. And what it will, do, what it will do is it will show you where those loop points are with the loop start, the green one here, and the loop end, the red one here. If you don't have loop points, those two will be grayed out and at the start and at the end of the file. Now, let's say you do want, the file is set to loop. So let's go to, let's close the source editor. Then we're in our uh, sound property editor here. And as you can see here, it's already looping, All right, Right here. So I set it to loop. So I know the file is supposed to loop. So I go back to the source editor. And now it's going to loop from here to here, all right? Beginning of the file, end of the file. But let's say I just want to loop this section here, all right? And let's say, I don't, again, I don't have loop points on my file. Or if I do, I have overrided them here, override file loop points. Um, and I want the loop to start from here. Now, uh, sorry, I want to. I want the loop to start from here, so I can start the file further. But if I want it to loop, it's gonna go through playback, 
and it's going to start here or let's say here and then it's going to get into that zone and then loop so if you know anything about basically the music hierarchy this is kind of like how it works now the cool thing that i want to show you is this so if you change the crossfade duration actually let's bring those in closer and let's zoom in boom all right put our playhead here look what it does all right so you can actually make loops in wise so if you're having clicks if uh if you don't want to do the whole cut the middle move the stuff around in uh in your daw and then export that and you don't want to do any of that you just have a cool ambience or a drone or whatever and it's not it clicks because you haven't made it clean so it can loop well you just loop start loop end and then select your crossfade duration you can also input something longer um, because it does max out at uh, I figure I think it's 500 so let's say 1000 uh, sorry 1000 and yeah so you can actually input a, a bigger value anyways um, and it's pretty cool how it looks actually so yeah and then if you want to take them off override loop points boom and the override loop points is also um, is also uh, to override the loop points that are actually in the file, in the metadata of the file, if you do have that, or if you do use that. So yeah, pretty cool feature. Uh, what's left? Um, so makeup gain, pretty self-explanatory. You can add gain to it. Uh, and that is basically it. You can reg uh, reg uh, reset, sorry. You can reset some stuff, your playhead, everything, if you move stuff around here and blah, blah, blah. Right here. Uh, then you can reset everything back. So we have a reset button. It's pretty cool. Uh, and lastly, we have another tab here, actually. So we have the source setting tab. Um, this is basically the same thing as you would have if we would um, actually, if we go in source settings on an actual container, in this case, a sound SFX object, it's the same thing, but why would you want to do it on um, on the source level is you might have a specific workflow that requires you to be very, very, very granular on specific files. Or maybe, um, like it's shown in the 251 certification, you can actually copy the file, you can paste it. Let's say for this is an example, it wouldn't necessarily be a copy pasted file, but anyways, but you can actually do platform exclusion and unlink the files here. And then on the source itself, author a different conversion setting. So in this case, I would have it set to my music share set. And then the other source here would still be based on the parent, which is in PCM. Um, again, this is a super specific use case. You might have other use cases. This is not necessarily the way to go about it, authoring share sets and conversion settings on the parents are still the best way to go about it because you're going to waste a lot of time doing every single one manually. Uh, so that's not why it's there. It's there for very specific ed edge cases. And if you are, if you need to have this functionality, if you, if you are in those edge cases, well, you'll know that you need them and you'll, you'll use this feature. So that's basically it. So double click on the file, general settings, you move stuff around, fade in, trim, edit. And that's pretty much it. All right. So see you next time.